Hey everybody, welcome back to the Move Podcast. Brought to you each and every time by Aura Ring. So much technology in such a little package when you're trying to monitor your health closely, all the aspects of it, uh, sleep, recovery, activity. This is the way to go, a non-invasive ring uh, that, that tracks everything and has cool partnerships, uh, a bunch across the sports leagues. Head on over to Aura Ring, O-U-R-A ring.com. There's our flow code. All right, we're talking about stage 16 after the rest day. QLN. Stage 16 from Pas de la Case to Saint-Gaudan. Oh, Pas de la Case. So in the, we'll notice there that we don't have the Corsican birds. Hey, um, he's, uh, he recut that one. Well, he, yeah, he, he, he went back and listened and realized he messed that one up. He's back in Aspen now, so he had to recut it. But we missed, well, missed the birds a little bit. Didn't you say we had a special guest to pronounce that stage 16? Or was that me dreaming something? No, we were going to have... Uh, Shirley do it, but she went off and did ah, uh, Anna's got yoga class. Got it. So, um, but but that, that doesn't mean we can't have her in another day. She speaks fluent French and yep, and she makes amazing food for us. Keeps us all fueled up. Uh, today's show also brought to you by Wahoo Speedplay pedals, engineered and designed to count for everything. The platform combines a low-profile pedal with an innovative cleat design to create a truly advanced pedal system. This is my, this is actually, I rode a certain pedal for my whole career and then I switched over about 10 years ago to speed plays, primarily when I was doing triathlons and worried about uh, transition from bike to run and just keeping my hips nice and flex and open. Um, I switched and I, I, I've, I've, I've just loved it ever since, actually. Uh, it's the only dual sided pedal platform, so easy to clip, clip into at uh, red lights or whenever you're going. Uh, best in class float. Back to my point of tries. I mean, just keeping keeping everything floating. Uh, they've got a speed play for every ride. They got the Nano, the Zero, the Comp, and the Arrow. Uh, head on over to WahooFitness.com. WahooFitness.com. Today's show also brought to, brought to you by Athletic Greens. This is something that George and I have been getting on uh, really since probably the last week. Um, you know, I'm, I'm uh, full transparency. I'm somebody that just doesn't eat enough greens. My, my, people think I probably have a, a strict diet, but my, my vegetable game is not good. Um, but what's happened, I mean, with Athletic, they've really created a product here that's truly unique. Um, over 75 absorbable vitamins, minerals, probiotics, superfoods, all in one thing. The other cool thing I learned this yesterday is they have uh, reformulated the 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 you know the whole platform 52 times so as things evolve and they come across uh, better and better products they don't just sit tight they've recreated this 52 times which i think is just amazing also nsf certified for sport um also had a conversation i know uh, my good buddy dr peter atia is a big fan and uh talked to him about it this morning he said he calls bullshit on just about everything except for this like he is uh and atia uh knows what he's talking about so um head on over to well there's sorry there's a special offer for for and then another thing that i have a problem with is is deficiency uh in the vitamin d category i'm i'm just constantly low in d uh, which is a problem and and most of the world believe it or not is is low on vitamin d uh, so for our listeners head on over to athleticgreens.com slash the move you get uh, year-round immune support, also a free one-year supply of vitamin D, and five free travel packs. That's athleticgreens.com slash the move. What are you going to say? And I was going to say, interestingly enough, we're outside all the time, so you I think know. we'd be super healthy in the vitamin D sense, but some of our DNAs just don't absorb it from the sun, so we need these sort of supplements to keep us... Well, and I think there's something to be said for having all of these things in your system that help D be absorbed, right? Yep, so, sure. Well, uh, not the most exciting of days, and maybe, maybe to be expected on the day after a rest day, the Peloton just wants to get back in the groove. Um, I, I would have hated this <laughs> day back because, you know, it's downhill start, cold rain, um, looked miserable when I flicked on the TV this morning. Yeah, 30 kilometers straight downhill from the start, and it uh, looked like the riders organization came to some sort of agreement where they can stop change jackets or change clothing, which was kind of nice to hear that um, 
the organizations and the UCI uh, decided to let them, you know, put their proper clothing on yeah, once I mean, the descent was over. Yeah, at this point in the tour, it went with a straight downhill start um, from probably pretty high up, five 5,000 feet or so. It's going to be cold. Guys are getting worn down. Guys are getting lean and thin, so it's easy to get sick. Uh, but you got to start with as much clothes on as, as you can to, to just, you know, be safe. But then you got to start going back uphill again. It's bull. So yeah, so I, I, they sort of neutralize it while people they swap stop. Gear? They pull on. I think yeah. apparently they pull on. Stop on the huh. side of the road. Everybody's got the rain bags in the back of the car, so you're able to, you know, hopefully they had extra dry jerseys or whatever whatever they were doing. But it was clearly a different set of clothing needed for that straight downhill 30 kilometer section. And then you go straight into a category two climb. Yeah, I'm trying to the clothing management for a day like this would have been terrible because you would have. Unless you want to start going downhill and get really wet and really cold, I mean, which yeah. nobody would want to do at this point. Um, I, I, we never had that. We never had that option. But I, I support that. You know, finally, absolutely, little, little baby steps, maybe baby steps. And Patrick Conrad, what a dude! What a ride! I mean, this guy was, you know, I started trying to learn more about him, and I um, started look, going down the rabbit hole of his Instagram, and uh, I, I, unbeknownst to us. Um, we had actually posted a picture of him on stage two after all the crashes from stage one. So that y'all will remember, this is the one we posted up. Uh, this is the kid. And he's a, yeah, at that moment, he wasn't even really a rider on our radar. <laughs> no, this is, and, it, and at that point, you think this is a guy that's not going to be around the race for very long. <clears throat> Just a lesson for you kids, you hang in there. Yeah, the biggest win of his career. Yeah, biggest first win. first win outside of Austria. I mean, obviously won the Austrian, Austrian sorry, national championships. And it was interesting. He's been in the breakaway for the last, he's been in three or four breakaways this entire race. And he said in his interview, each time he's been waiting for the final, which most of us would always be waiting for the final, the last hard climb. But the wins have been coming from the guys anticipating the attack and going early. I mean, normally uh, this would be uh, typically a much, uh, this attack would be way too early. I mean, I think he went with like 35, 40 K to go. But what we're seeing is the guys in the back, if it's five or 10 guys, whatever it is, they're just not working together as well as one guy alone who's all in for the win. Right. You just know they never get organized. Yeah. I mean, you had you had Colbrelli and Godu, uh, uh, David, David Godu, <laughs> but they just couldn't – they didn't have the horsepower. He was going too good. And then the, you join a larger group, and they all look at each other. Yeah. Every, I mean, they're always going to look at each other. Colbrelli just continues to impress. I'm, I, I'm thinking mm -hmm. right now he is the most aggressive rider in the Tour de France. I mean, yeah. the, what he's doing between the sprinting to – getting in all the hard th these aren't easy breakaways to get into mm -hmm. let's be real here these are the hardcore breakaways super hard uh, strong guys getting in there and he's getting in all of these moves making moves on the green jersey going for stage wins it's incredible what he's doing so how far. good of a time trial is cabrelli he's i think he'll i i would say he's going to take it easy in the time <laughs> trial <laughs> yeah. because he's all in for these breakaways i mean and just to in general points. he's just such an all-rounder yeah seems. i'm not sure actually yeah, yeah. He's, hmm. he's a little pocket rocket he's probably that's probably one of his weaknesses, but man, the tenacity to just keep fighting, um, dude, super impressed. I agree with you, George. That, that's that should be the the red number at the at the end of the tour. On uh, the TV coverage today, they showed there's only been two Austrian uh, stage winners in the tour. Three. There was one in the like 20s, and then we had in in, in one year um, with us, George Tochenig won, who was a really was a great guy on, on Gerald Steiner. Um, but that was what 16 years ago. I mean, if I if you believe what they said on TV, but you know, what long time before that? You, that's hard to believe. It seems like there'd be a lot more Austrian riders in general, yeah. and there are not. What are they all skiing? They're all skiing. They're all <laughs> right? down, they're, they're all downhill. That's in the North dream Italy. if you grow yeah. up there, huh? Yeah, yeah. No, you want ooh, you want to be a cyclist? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, no, they they they're a powerhouse in other sports, but um, so. No, I feel like another another part of this story is like we're seeing these breakaways. We're seeing some huge teams, the biggest teams in the whole peloton, Ineos, Movistar, that are clearly have, starting out these stages with goals to make it the breakaway. We saw Superman Lopez going today. We saw uh, Kiyotowski going. They're not making the breakaway. It's something weird is going on with these superpower teams. They, they should definitely be in there. They're clearly, from Movistar, getting close to Spain. They need to get the win. They haven't gotten really anything in this Tour de France except for second the other day with Valverde. It doesn't but, count. Doesn't count. Lance says, who cares about second always? But, I mean, they, they got to start making these breakaways. Yeah, and, and two things. One, we keep talking about this, but still only eight teams. Another win for Bora. Still only eight of the 23 teams have won a stage. That's 
that that's kind of a pressure. Yeah, that's <laughs> the pressure mounts for for the other fifteen. But uh, speaking of Superman, I I, I saw another uh, headline that um, just 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 you know just <laughs> chapped my hide. Oh, um, Gil Martin, who I talked about the other day, just in such a, a, a good position for the overall, gets dropped on the downhill. That's 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 I don't understand that. He doubled down today. He said if he were allowed to do the super tuck, he would not have been dropped. Oh, I didn't catch that. <laughs> yes. Now. <laughs> yeah, that. What about staying on the wheels? How about that? Yeah. And what about all, if you're allowed to do it, then all the other guys are allowed to do it. And the, it, it, it's, well, the, that math doesn't work for me. Well, clearly he came out of the rust day angry about losing that time. You saw them today. The race was essentially over. The field's taking it easy up the Category 4 climb. All of a sudden you get... Kofidis doing a little bit of surprise sneak attack, which is why we're always saying no matter what's going on in the peloton, you got to be. Got to be Mosca. Got to be Mosca. <laughs> the guys were clearly on there. I mean, a lot of strange stuff happened there. With what was the point of that? Not sure. I think he was maybe trying to. You know, I think he's in ninth place. He's in no. He's. I don't think he is in ninth place overall. Perhaps he was trying to. Uh, you know, get a little bit of a gap on these guys, but they were right on it. Van Aert just sprinted by him and. Essentially pulled the last 12 kilometers. To yeah, the finish why line. was he doing? I don't know. I didn't understand. Everybody was there. All 10 guys in the GC were there. Um, it was a huge effort. And then the other thing is they sprinted full gas like if it was for, for a stage win. Mm -hmm. But they're going for, I don't know what, 12th, 13th place. Yeah. You got um, Carapat sprinting. You had uh, Vindegaard sprinting. Yeah, Pogachar comes yeah. around at the end and gives them the look. I'm feeling like there's a little bit of, uh, you know, no love lost situation going on there. Ooh, it's kind of a. I like that. Like, Why else would you be sprinting for that? Unless you're. Yeah. I've heard some people say maybe trying to rev the engine for tomorrow, but come on, it was no. a hard enough stage. Yeah, like, are those ego moves? The the look looked like one of those That's LA right. looks back in the day. Like, <laughs> really? Why are you sprinting? Okay, I'm just going to beat you just to show I'll you I show can. You. Yeah. I support that. I support it's that. Part of the part of the mental yeah, game, keep yeah? These guys in check, right? Just remind them who the boss is. <laughs> There's a lot to be said for that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but how, I mean, Ben Hart, the guy is a freaking beast. He's a monster. He's a beast. He just pulled, I mean, Sept helped him out a little bit, but he just stayed on the front and just pulled all the way to the finish line. And he was having troubles all day. He stopped, at least from what I saw, my stop more. Correct. It, two stops on the side of the road to either uh, change a bike or some mechanical. Yep. I mean, it's not easy to keep coming back, coming back, coming back, and then just to sit on the front and just, yeah. and the way he went by those Kofidis guys, you talk about the look. He's like... <laughs> Guys, watch this. This is what power looks and feels like. Um, today's show also brought to you by Roca. Talk about them all the time. Uh, uh, great friends down in Austin, Texas. Rob and his whole team completely uh, reinvented this category between um, the, the, the weight of the shade, the lens quality, and also on the prescription side. Um, just absolutely crushing. Uh, speaking of triathlon, sort of born out of the triathlon world, uh, my, my place where I originally came from. But... I uh, love everything they're up to. Uh, head on over to Roka, that's R-O-K-A dot com, and enter the move at checkout for 20% off. Also brought to you today by Outside Plus, who's been a, just an amazing partner of ours on the We Do segment. Uh, we'll, we'll get into breaking down some of the updates there because there have been updates in the last few days. Uh, people decide to take the rest day and go out and, and make some money. Um, but Outside, uh, Robin and his whole team over there is, is reinventing as well. Uh, this whole category. So for us folks who love being outdoors, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, all of the brands that we know and love, like Outside, Velo News, Peloton Magazine, Backpacker, Triathlete, Yoga Journal, Climbing, access to all this. It's all bundled into one subscription package. It's called Outside Plus. Head on over to out, uh, outsideonline.com slash the move to subscribe. And 25% uh, off actually right now. A bonus for our listeners, outsideonline.com slash the move. And the code there is move25 for 25% off. What are we in the... Uh... Well, now, now we're starting to see even more races starting to form. We got the team classification, which is always a major part of the race in the That's last over. week of the Tour de France. I wouldn't say it's over. I mean, uh, to... Baharan's leading EF education by 11 minutes, which we know is not a very big gap uh in the mountain stages i thought i heard it was it was a lot more well no it was it was it's a lot more to you know the lower places the two hours yeah two hours is um yeah tw basically 10th place 12th place but now george i'm gonna have to correct you 
It looks like the app just updated here on the tour app. So they're now 35 minutes up on EF. Oh, they are. And uh, why is mine app? Oh, okay. I can see why. Uh, right. see why. <coughs> Dumb you're question. At, you're looking yeah. at the wrong stage. Uh, I was looking at I'm going to ask a really uh, rookie question, but we've never discussed how the team is calculated because some teams have are down to four or five riders. Right. But it's what? Top, first three top, guys. First three guys. Stage. First three. Yeah. Total time. Total time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a big deal because um, while you're in the race, it, it gets to be annoying. Like you have certain teams, they will ride, they will change the outcome of the race just to defend this or just to try to, uh, uh, you know, move up in the team classification. But, you know, the reality is, is when we get to Paris, they present the yellow jersey and the, all the jerseys. And the team, the, the team classification is presented on the Champs Elysees as well. It's a big deal. It's a huge that, deal. I mean, you know, worldwide TV, you have all the riders that have finished there. Uh, sponsor represented like it's they will fight for this and you actually never stood on the podium for team classification where i have 2007 that, that's actually not true because in 2009 astana won oh, the team classification. Oh, wow <laughs> okay i didn't think about that one yeah you got make on sexy one. day but you probably didn't you probably actually didn't care about that one god i wanted I, I wanted to get off that po i'm like do i really <laughs> first of all i had to stand up here uh, uh on the third step Hey, so we got a slide of that. That'd be kind of good <laughs> to see the look on his face. It was. Why is it that 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 year? That's that's the only picture that, uh, that that's when they you know they just don't like you. They're like, I'm sorry. This is the only picture any of us got. Look, this, look how fucking miserable he is. That's that's it. I'm sorry. Nope. No pictures of him with his family or smiling. Nope. Just there. Just in disgrace. Yeah, that was. And then I had to do the damn team, uh, with a Kazakhstan jersey on. Did you have the Kazakhstan flag draped over your shoulders or not? <laughs> Just the jersey? Man. Oh, I, I, I don't want to talk about it. I'm, I'm done talking. I talked a little bit. I'm done. Well, um, while we're talking jerseys, the green jersey is still interesting. I mean, this is perfect for Cav. I mean, he, he's he, – he, First of all, he know he's a pro. He's got a great team around him. He can just oh, there it is. <laughs> this is and look, wow. and they have to be next to the pistol arrow. This look is the only look. photo available. <laughs> did you guys hug it out after that, or no? Just... I don't know. I don't think we did. It, uh, d d d d I don't think we've ever hugged it out. Oh my gosh! What was the the dinner like that night? Uh, not not good. Not good. No, no, it's very. You had to, if you combine. Him and all his people and me and all of my people and a bunch of Kazakhstanis. It was not. It, this was the <laughs> lamest the part. Weirdest. That would have been a good one to see. That was on, like, you were you like, know. man, I'm glad I didn't get invited. <laughs> it just sucked. <laughs> Ugh, man. Mm. Uh, today's show also brought to you by Helix Sleep. Last one of the day here. Uh, this is uh, for George and I both. This is our, our um, exclusive mattress. This is what we sleep on all the time. Um, I would say it's proven to work, but, but hard to prove that, but I can tell you it's been proven to work for me as I test uh, all the metrics throughout the day, including sleep uh, through the ring. But uh, don't listen to me. I mean, uh, uh, Wired Magazine, GQ Magazine named it Mattress of the Year, uh, got a 10-year warranty on it. Uh, also a special bonus package here at the end, but uh, it's real simple. You go on uh, the website. You take a two-minute quiz. You talk about your sleep, uh, the qualities of your sleep, the things that, that are specific to you, and they customize the mattress. Boom. Like all uh, – that is just – that's incredible how they do that. Um, head on over to helixsleep.com slash the move. Take the two-minute quiz and get your own customized mattress. And this is the special offer. $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. That's helixsleep.com slash the move. There's a flow code. That's a cool looking flow code. Um, tomorrow. Tomorrow, just, big day. I feel like we're in the Pyrenees forever. But tomorrow, finally, you know, uh, we talked about it back in October, whenever these downhill finishes, it's just such a bummer. But we now finally have two uphill finishes, which, you know, in a mountain range like the Pyrenees, you just got to have, you got to go uphill. You got to finish uphill. I don't, on an HC climb, no less. Oh, it's the it's hard. Forty k yeah. is going to be fireworks. Yeah, it's a tough one, and uh, and uh, the relatively flat start. So we still got we got these huge teams like Astana, Movistar, Ineos, Group Armor that have not got stage wins. That their meetings are now in the morning are like, I don't care what you do, you're making this breakaway, and we are we need to get a stage win. There's there the desperation is starting to come through, so we could see like a you know. 
55 kilometer an hour for the first one hour or two before the breakaway mm. goes tomorrow. And, and I think you bring up a good point because we, we keep talking about how only eight teams have won stages of the of the now uh, 16. Um, this is this is a good point. So, but because there are teams that that are you know have gotten into the tour, they don't expect to win a, a stage. Now it would be amazing. It would be a you yeah, know, a year correct. maker for them. And then there are other teams that absolutely expect, like Movistar. I mean, yes, they, they don't come into the tour going, "Gosh, I hope we win a stage." Like it's a, it's a given. They have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So, and you know, especially now that they're you know right, basically right on the border of Spain, uh, they got a ton of pressure on them. All eyes on Movistar. Uh, I was shocked to not see them in the breakaway today. Just got a message back in the control room from Higgs that, uh, and just to, to show you up a little bit more. In fact, I've won. Wait, excuse me. Let me back up. How many team classifications have you won? One. Oh, one. Okay. Well, I've won two. See, I don't remember anything. But apparently, we won again in 2010 with Team Radio Shack. I don't know if really? I have a slide, but it's probably probably captured a really un- unfortunate moment with an expression on my face. But <laughs> at least that must have been a better party that night, though. American team. Not not a great party. Not a great party also. No. Why is that? Just just too much going on in my world at that time, <laughs> as you will well remember if you just sit there and think for a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. We could talk about that for a That would be an interesting conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So, yeah, there's 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 teams that just – they're they're excited to be there. And, and if they got a stage one, it is a dream come true. But then there's these powerhouses – yeah, those team meetings in the mornings. Yeah, holy hell, fire! And the the directors on the radio at the start too. I mean, this is all that's all they're saying. You know, the French guys got to go with the attacks, got to go with everything. And then there's gonna be there's gonna be teams that don't make the breakaway that'll end up chasing. I mean, it's gonna be a lot of fireworks at uh, start tomorrow. Well, you basically you have 115 kilometers, so call it you know 70 ish miles of no climbs. So yeah, yeah. they're going from kilometer zero. More is not going to be easy, that's no. for sure. Uh-uh. Well, not to make George nervous, but do you see on the board it says George video? I do see and that. And I know he gets nervous when he doesn't know what's coming up. Is this the video of him shaving his balls? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe we have that for one. The but mem- I am the curious mem- to know The members what this video have been is. tracking this story closely. <laughs> I don't know the story. Who found this video or the, how it ended up with the sport? It's a, pack about it's a very young place. George Hincapie. Doing well, I must say. Teenage Hincapie. Uh, can you tell us here. just exactly how this here happens have. here? Big George here. Uh, Big, is that Big George Hincapie? Yeah, from big. from New York. Oh, well, we've got a celebrity in our midst, folks. George Hincapie, <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> Ripped all my spokes out and took me and He made me look down. confident in the beginning of the line. He said he was going to knock me down. Look what happened to him. Don't well, look nothing on me. I don't have no problem. Well, it just goes to show you, a champion always makes it. There I go. Oh, what's up? Oh, wow. Wow. Where was that? That, that was in uh, D.C. Uh, Washington, D.C. crit. I don't that, was, know. that was Marty Nonstein. I know. That was winner. Marty Nonstein, the, the world-class sprinter back in the day. I don't know. I, I don't, you really kind of can't unsee his cut-off <laughs> T-shirt. And you're just sitting there uh, uh, leaning on your bike, eating an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> Did you? See, I, I, <laughs> you just. I wasn't very healthy back in those days. You were days. just munching burritos just and talking and ice cream shit. You're both just talking shit to each other. Yeah, you know what? That cycling needs a, a, a bit more uh, smack talk yeah. in the peloton. Yeah, so. When did you start eating right? Not until you became a pro. Probably. Yeah. Just eat whatever. That was May 1988. Wow. Wow. I had, yeah. that, I had that good look going on though. That was pretty good. Jeez. <laughs> Let's do an out. Let's do. I alluded to this earlier. Let's do a, a, an update on the um, on the We Do segment leaderboard brought to you by Outside Plus. Uh, Jill Patterson still leading, and and Ben Wright still leading. Uh, but here's the thing: we've only got five more more days to 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 wrap this up. So that's that's all the time you folks get. Uh, in the men's U23 uh, division, bunch of competitors the last few days. Uh, competition's getting tight. I guess they're all bunched up. But here's the thing, and I just want to remind everybody, it's um, in the U23 division, it's five grand to win, three for second, and a grand for third. And we're not seeing the U23 women. Now, mm-hmm. uh, my uh, uh, Grace and uh, Isabel are 19. I might send them out there <laughs> and tell them to go, because that's, that's real dough. Um, but we're not seeing a ton of U23 women. So calling all U23 women, get over there to Brevard, get you some money. Some spending money. 
Definitely. And so let's clear this up. When is the actual last time they could ride it? Saturday. It's, so Saturday. Yeah. So we'll announce it Sunday. On so the on, the, on the on the final day of the tour, we will announce all of the winners. Got it. Um, so, and and again, brought to you by Outside Plus and the leaderboard by the feed. Thanks to both of them for uh, supporting this effort. But U23, get out there. What's up? Yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of strong ladies that need to go out there this and is, win yeah, that well, money. Well, 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 Greenville's an hour and a half away. Yeah. Who is the strongest? Because these are your people, right? The reason we went there is because you got your people from that part of the world to vote. Who is the strongest U23? I don't want to put you on the spot, but you best be making some calls. Yeah, I will. I got some, I got a couple in mind. Come might on. Get, might have to get my percentage, but I'll, I'll make some calls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can negotiate whatever you want on your side hustle. I don't care. <laughs> Um, we got any questions, Jamie? Uh, uh, first, a comment uh, that was on YouTube from Jennifer. It says, please make a T-shirt that says, do your life. <laughs> Such a funny story, and my husband and I say it all the time yes. now. Love your show. I, I, I agree. Because the do could be the D-U with the, mm-hmm. with the, you know, the bar. Do your life. And she's here in town. And there's, yeah, she's that came from town. George's wife. She's here, yep. George's what wife. What was the context of that? I was, she was trying to argue with me, and I, was, <laughs> I just wasn't having it. And she was just learning English, and she was trying to say, I don't know what she was trying to say, you know, but she just, she got really frustrated. And, and she goes, she just blurts out, do your life. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that was a low blow. <laughs> All right, here's another one. I was left with a question yesterday after Lance talked about how some sponsors would face rest day uh, and the last few days very worried and even angry. Could Lance and George explain how that actually works in a team's day-to-day dynamic? How does a sponsor express worry during a long race? Do the riders feel it or get to know those worries directly? Uh, It must be freaking nerve-wracking to race with such pressure. Also, what kind of exposure do sponsors care about? Those hour-long, lonely getaways, do yes. they care about that? Or is it stage wins in jerseys? I, I, and a little side note, that um, email question came from Daniel, who I met at ACL Fest. He was performing there with his band, Diamante Electrico. Wow. He saw me in a, in a move shirt and came up <laughs> really? and said hi. He's a, he's a fan. So That's anyhow. Good. More on sponsors. I, I think the smaller teams to, to to work backwards. The smaller teams definitely care about those long breakaways. Those are you know we always call them TV attacks. That's exactly what they are. You're on live TV all day long. It's great exposure for the sponsor. Um, and and then on the, the 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 initial part of the question, I think it 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 depends on a couple of things. If your if your team contract is up and you're trying to get them to resign or renew or find a new sponsor, I mean there's the pressure is 10 X, right? If you've got multiple years with them and you know, they're not going anywhere and all you have to do is put up with their yelling at you or, or being disappointed or frustrated or concerned, then you can deal with that. But, um, it just depends on the dynamic, but, uh, does it trickle down to the riders? Yeah. I'm sure the directors go, Hey, I'm getting calls from, you know, sponsor X, Y, Z. What the hell? Let's go guys. Yeah. And some of the, some of the teams are obviously uh, sponsored by, super wealthy individuals that are really engaged like Tinkoff was, and he'd be calling up riders and calling them out in the press, putting them under a lot of pressure. Patrick Lefebvre has done that in the past as well, but every team's different, but all the riders, I mean, it's their job. They're all professionals. They know what they, they know how they need to perform. They know how they're, they're being, they're expected to perform. Uh, so the pressure mainly is put on them by themselves. What about outside of the race? Are you guys called to do a lot of schmoozing and no, Glad handing with sponsors? No, Mm-mm. not really. No. Well, it depends on the team. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, obviously the tour is difficult because I the riders are so tired. But the training camps definitely, mm-hmm. um, and there's set days uh, during training camps that you have to do the smooth, smoothing for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, when, if not already, this is to Lance and George. When, if not already, will their kids be able to beat them? on a bicycle that's from ryan it's a it's a very timely question because we've been riding with uh george's son enzo every day my prediction is it's close this kid is <laughs> it, it's you know I, don't, I think i i think it has a lot to do with me being there like he, these the kids like to beat up on uncle lance i'm sure he's gonna love the day that he drops his dad but the chance to take a run at uncle lance <laughs> like right now is it, it, it's not long george until he drops you 
Yeah, he's getting stronger and stronger. I mean, for some reason, I mean, this, you know, Cranky over here, uh, we're always talking about how he doesn't like many people and all that, but kids love this man. My <laughs> seven-year-old, he got here. The only thing he said, when am I see Uncle Lance? When am I going to see Uncle Lance? And every morning he's running over here to see him, so it's kind of funny. Kids have the best meter on these things. <laughs> they know. They call bullshit quicker than anybody. Yep. Yeah. You should have more kids. You're good at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have a basketball team. I should go for a football team. Uh, here's an interesting comparison in sport, which we sometimes do on this show. Uh, this is from Wim in Belgium. He says, when footballers go to the world championships, their teams get a compensation. Is this also true for cyclists? Hmm. So if Nibali leaves, to tour, leaves the tour to prepare for Tokyo, is uh, in Tokyo, Nibali will ride for Italy, not for Trek to do this. Does Trek get compensated for his absence? No, no, yeah, I didn't no, think so. I don't think so. That's, a, that's an interesting dynamic. It's a great, yeah, it's a good question, yeah. but I don't think so. Hmm. Uh, first, let me take this. Is funny. Someone's uh, you're gonna. This is gonna sound very familiar, but they wrote this. Uh, Matt says, first, let me take care of a little business. I don't know if this is a disclaimer or an endorsement. Probably a little bit of both. But as an OG listener of the move. Uh, it's fantastic to see the show's ever-growing success. Lance, JB, George, and Johan are the Fab Four, the best Fab Four since John, Paul, George, and Ringo. Wow. Keep it going. Damn. It was fantastic to see an American return to the podium. How do we strengthen and form uh, teams in America for American riders for professional cycling? They're doing it all wrong. I'm just, and I, 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 I think I said the other day that I have. I think I have a solution here or an idea, but they're, they're doing it wrong. I mean, you have, you have uh, uh, what do we have, two American teams in the tour. By the way, both of, neither of which have an American on the team. So racing under the American flag, you have Segafredo and EF. Neither have an American on the team. Okay, that's weird. But EF has Palos. My bad. So we yeah. have one. Um, but, but the, the, the approach, look what, look what, uh, um, and even lot or, or sorry, uh, Jumbo has done it to an extent, but look at the approach Sky took in Ineos. Like you take a long view, you start, you, you, you build the back end, you build the foundation, you build all the science, and then you start to, you know, put together the team and you take a long view. We have, I don't know, a dozen young kids right now that, that, that could be at the front of this race at some point in front of the tour at some point. We talked about, I mean, we talk about them a lot, but they're all, they're on all these other teams. Like it's, 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 the approach is wrong. Yeah, I agree. Well, back to your point, taking the long view is uh, certainly the ideal approach. The problem is these days, the market isn't really just giving us that, that where somebody can commit to a three to five year commitment where you're planning and getting everything dialed in. We're having a hard time finding the, the sponsors to do that. No, but you have. But my point is, you have two American teams. Okay, the the the, the Segafredo. I don't even know what they. They don't have an approach. They yeah. just. Th there is no uh, uh, methodical approach or, or design behind what they're trying to build. There's not. They just you know go hire guys here and there and say and not that they have bad riders and not that they won't have some success as we've seen, but if if you want to come dominate a race like this, no, you you have to take a, a holistic long view approach to how you you build out this team especially when you have a crop of young guys who are who who are going to be good right and then, but right now the, the, with this setup they're going to be on all these other teams and it's very frustrating well, it's an interesting thing with both you guys is is you've rolled up your sleeves to develop talent you had a mm -hmm. development team you had a pro continental team elaborate on how the struggles with that to, to pull that off it's not easy yeah it was not easy i mean like i said it was oh we, were, we always had year to year to year commitments uh so it's really hard to plan that way even though at one point we had the, the pro continental level we we're still kind of begging to get in races so the system is not really aligned to uh, you know support these smaller teams it's kind of like survival mode um unfortunately but I think there's there's hope, and uh, certainly Sepkus um, inspired uh, a ton of uh, you know up and coming cyclists here in the United States, and it was awesome to see. Well, here's my I mean not to keep doubling down on this, but a guy like Sepkus or or any of these Americans that are not 21 or 22, but they're slightly older, or even to win some guys that are that are you know in their early 30s. So you you layer in this this uh, experience and sort of. Uh, peak potential or peak form at the moment of their career right now. And then you bring these young and you just build out the whole thing, but you got to build out the back end. 
Like there has to be thought put into yeah. it. That's exactly. I remember when Sky came into this board and this guy came from the track, Dave Brailsford, and we're going to win the tour one day. I said, you're fucking crazy. You ain't never going to win the tour. Well, guess what? I was dead ass wrong. And, but they came in and they just took their time and they brought science and they brought people. It was, I, I respect the hell out of what they, they built. They took a whole year just setting up. Yep. No, they weren't even in the Peloton at that point. They yep. took a year talking to riders, management, or, you know, directors, everything, coaches. Then they went in and it took them, they didn't start winning right away. It took them three to four years yep. before they actually won the Tour de France. But they had the plan and they had the commitment. And they had the budget. Commitment, they had the budget. And they had the budget. That's, you know, that's the X factor here is yeah. when you got... You have a, a a partner, a sponsor that is also patient and is, and also has. You just have blank checks to write. Well, then that also helps. So yep. I don't want I don't want to minimize that. That's a key part of this. All right, one more since it was kind of a light day, unless your name is was Patrick Conrad, right? Mm-hmm. Um, does this does a star team leader have input into the team makeup? Would a leader ever say, "No way, I can't ride with so and so"? Or really, I need so and so. That's from Rod in San Francisco. One hundred percent, absolutely. Yeah, but going both ways. I, I want that so and so on my team, and this guy's leaving the team, right? Yeah. And and even as much as I trusted Johan to make all those decisions, there 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 were both of those uh, examples. And you know, and look at look, I mean, we joke about it, but it's true. Look at the story. You know, the situation with Sagan. I mean, here's he's. He calls the shots there, which I think is another great story that um, Borg gets another win after uh, he goes home. But, um, yeah, yeah, those, these big riders, they, they, they have a lot of power. And having, now having uh, worked with you the last four years or so, one thing about you is you're very vibey and, and big on energy mm. and getting bad energy the hell away from me. Were you that way when racing with the team? We had we, – we, yeah, I mean, George yeah. is kind of smirking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, no. I mean for the most you know part, what I mean, though. He's very like you don't. No, no, you, you just push away bad energy. For the like, most uh, part, we had we had saw we had um, you know we had pumps on the team. We did we had very few drains, not just uh, from the rider side, but also from the staff. Yeah, one, we were, one thing. I mean, I there were say, there were a couple. I was real glad to see go, but you want to surround yourselves with faucets, not drains, and it's a huge. It, you can have some of the best riders in the world. On the same team, but if they don't get along and the ambiance in the team bus is not good, the performance is not going to come. It's gotta, you got to be. This sport is so hard that you got to get to the bus or the dinner table and laugh and enjoy mm-hmm. your company. Mm-hmm. Very cool. If you have a question for any one of the remaining shows before the tour ends, the move at we do dot team. All right. Thanks for tuning. Hey, who does? We do. We do. <laughs> These guys rode by us yesterday. Did you remember those dudes on the road bike that came by? One guy goes, who does? And the other one goes, we do. I was like, damn, that was fast. Nice work, boys. One listener said you should just make it, who do we do? It just runs better. Hmm. Just throwing that out there. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>